Okay, great. So um, this is some of the work we're uh, doing with uh, my three PhDs, and some of them will talk about this in more detail in a bit. But just to give you a little bit of an overview, so um, one of uh, the technologies we've been looking at is helping people do exercise, because uh, as I said earlier, exercise is one of the major sort of drivers of reversing cognitive decline, reversing risk for dementia. And what we've been looking at, because I'm quite lazy myself, is to come up with something that was very short and very easy to implement. Now, when we did work with Pride, um, led by Professor Oral in uh, Nottingham, Oren Dermot wrote a really nice review, and she found that exercise is as simple as just getting up and walking, uh, which is often used as an assessment, can also be used as an intervention. And that affected cognitive function, it affected physical abilities. And uh, Ori's review, also showed that multi-component exercises can really help prevent dementia. And Manisha and Ahmed will talk about that more in, in a bit. Now, we use two different sorts of exercise. We use yoga as a control, just yoga stretching and resistance bands. And what we found there was, you can see here in green, is that the people who did the resistance bands exercise just 20 minutes, three times a week in front of the tally, had much improved memory function on those tests which were sensitive to dementia. And that occurred in middle-aged people and older people with and without dementia. So various PhD students did that work, including, as I mentioned, Jordan Elliott King and uh, Angela Clifford and Jen Stock. Now, uh, one of the most important bits, and, and as I said, Manisha and Ahmed will talk more about this, is that you can affect these the outgrowth of nerve cells even in people with dementia. And this is an example of an older rat which is stimulated with cognitive stimulation. Mike just mentioned uh, cognitive stimulation therapy, which is one of the few brain training uh, exercise which is actually shown to work. So maybe a combination of something that has a cognitive load as well as physically demanding exercise could work best. But Manisha and Ahmed will tell you more about that in a bit. Um, now, what we oh sorry, what we try to do is work. Um, a, a lot of older people have difficulty with mobility, standing up. We talked about that this morning. Getting dizzy with autostatic hypertension, uh, feeling unstable, balance issues. So a lot of people told us they'd like to do exercises in a seated position. These strength exercises, and so what we've been doing is using various sensors, various monitoring techniques to make sure that people stay safe. And what we did here, and you can see that, is this co-designing. So in the top here, you can see what I'd come up with. And very similar to my talking cushion, this was absolutely abolished. People didn't like it at all. So I thought, well, I'm going to buy these lovely, very comfy chairs, and people will sit in that and enjoy themselves and watch these enders and just lie back and do their exercises, my idea. That was uh, bombed by my various people with dementia who came to visit and their carers. All my, my guests said, no, we don't like that. We want something snazzy. We want something sporty, which has got sensors on it, which you can extend and wrap up and put away. You know, So you do exercise, not as I'd envisage that, sitting down and, and watching telly, but as a separate activity. And then when you fold it up, you're done. And that seemed to be a sort of consensus, like people really like that. So uh, together with, uh, this is Daniel Magistro. He is now at Nottingham Trent. He was our researcher. And this is Kubing Wang, who just got her PhD from the Technical University of Delft. And she helped us do the co-designing of uh, this chair with the, with the exercises. And this gentleman and his carer are trying that out, are working with it, uh, how to give feedback. For instance, we ended up uh, using uh, these uh, sensory bands. We worked together with Professor Massimiliano Secca from uh, robotics, mechanical, and electrical engineering at Loughborough, and our PhD student, Janja Ma. 
And they developed these sensors in the bands that showed people how to do the exercises correctly within the correct direction, the correct strength and the correct speed to give feedback with lights and that worked really really well and so here you can see this co-designing uh we were of course helped by uh, professor liz peel as well on how to capture feedback from people best and how to get the communication going about exercises when people exercise and what they'd like to do um did people like it yep they liked it a lot um the majority we also had tv feedback with avatars people didn't like that that was too confusing so whenever we try to introduce something that had an additional component an additional load people didn't like it so i'm hoping that manisha and ahmed who've now got this new challenge to look at this that they will sort of take that further but that's something that we at that time that's kind of where it stopped people said no too much so we need to integrate that somehow um, we were working with a platform uh, using the type of technology that Mike talked about, the cognitive stimulation therapy. Uh, maybe it, it's known to be done well in groups, maybe using TV, for instance, to do uh, cognitive stimulation therapy in groups. Um, we developed with another program uh, called Maya Ha, a visual spatial memory test, which was shown to improve cognition. Then physical activity, we tried dance that didn't really work. People were falling over their feet, trying to keep up with the steps and the dance and the computer. So that was again, too much of a load. Uh, but the chair-based resistant band training, that did really work. And then as Mike also talked about this sort of adapted Facebook, Skype, TV, radio. We were working with a company called Bendigo with sensors, um, which gave feedback to allow people to stay independent at home. So that's sort of where we're at. Um, and this is a little bit of a, of a reminder of that cognitive functions. Yes, we can test them using technology. We can monitor them. We can enhance them using technology, but also because of the nature of dementia, these, uh, this also affects your interaction with technology. So we have to be mindful of all of this. And that for most of the equipment on the market, the evidence base is often lacking. The issues with vision and gait can increase risk for falls, but also other aspects like arthritis, reduced mobility, can all affect how people can engage with technology. So you need to be mindful of adaptive technology and working closely in co-designing to look at what people like. Um, and one of the things we're currently working on for the specialist dementia facility is working with sensor, sensors, meaningful activity. Uh, Mike talked about that, having activities that are meaningful, that engage, that um, work with people in various stages of the dementia journey, and that can be personalized. And I just want to mention a little bit of the work of Ahmad looking at thermal ventilation, because you're not having a talk, are you? No. Um, so um, Ahmad is working with Malcolm, looking at ventilation within the home using automated control systems. And um, basically, this is from a review, excellent review Ahmed wrote for his progress report, showing how people with dementia needed a slightly higher temperature to have optimal well-being uh, from 23 to 26, where humidity is very similar. The carbon dioxide concentrations probably needed to be a little bit lower for people to feel uh, comfortable. Airspeed levels, which affect how you perceive temperature, uh, temperature comfort, thermal comfort um, is, is very similar. So these are things to take into account, especially when people are exercising and getting hot. How does that system adapt? How can we keep people uh, happy and independent. And with Professor Malcolm Cook, Ahmed is looking at a combination of natural ventilation system using buoyancy, but also uh, looking at sensors which respond to these changes in the environment and which can then automatically adapt to the home environment. Um, there is also some work using modeling to uh, use protection against the sun. One of the aspects that's not very well highlighted in uh, aging is an increased sensitivity to glare. So you want to decrease that. And we have in the Chris and Sally house, we're having these um, 
sort of um, shields which would come out automatically to reduce glare. So when we asked people, people did like our environment um, and they will come back to this uh, when uh, we talk about this with, with Bill uh, at our uh, quarter to three. So I won't go into this, but people did like the active chair, people did like the thermal environment a lot. And so because we have very little time, I'd like to 